Good morning. Welcome to Northern Beaches Alliance online church service. It's great to have you with us today. Right now, we're just going to enter into a time of praise and worship.
Today, I want to continue to talk about what it means for us to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit comes down from heaven as the disciples are praying all together. And it says that all the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. As this occurred, some extraordinary events took place and they were so extraordinary that the neighbours near the house that the disciples were in were confused about what was going on. So much so that the whole crowd gathered to watch. So Peter, one of the leaders of the disciples, comes before this crowd to explain what is happening. And he quotes from the prophet Joel. And he says this, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. Peter, in quoting this prophecy, is explaining what is occurring and that as a consequence of this event of the coming of the Holy Spirit and in particular of being filled with the Holy Spirit, God's people are now able to see spiritually. One of the things that happens when we are empowered by the Holy Spirit is that we start to see, we start to see what God sees. Many times in the Gospels, in Jesus' ministry, it's clear that what Jesus saw, empowered by the Holy Spirit, was different to what other people saw. Jesus saw and discerned the spiritual dimension of life, where others could only see and understand the natural dimension of life. One of the critiques that Jesus had of the Pharisees and the Sadducees the leaders of Israel, was that they claimed to be spiritual people, but they couldn't see spiritually. In Matthew's Gospel, it tells of a moment where the Sadducees and the Pharisees come to Jesus to test him, to ask him to prove himself, to show them a sign. Jesus' reply to them is really interesting. He says, you know, in the evening when you look at the sky and see it's red, you you say, rightly, it's good weather tomorrow. In the morning, when you see the sky is red, you say, rightly, it's going to be stormy today. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you can't interpret the signs of the times, the spiritual seasons. Jesus' critique of these spiritual leaders was that although they were good at discerning the natural phenomena, they were blind to see and discern the spiritual phenomena. Another example of Jesus seeing spiritually was when a man came to him and and asked him, Jesus, what must I do to receive eternal life? Jesus says, well, you know the commandments, don't murder, don't steal, don't lie, etc., The man's response to Jesus was, well, I've I've kept the commandments all my life. In other words, what else do I need to do? Then the Bible says that Jesus looked at him and loved him and said, one thing you lack, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor and you'll receive treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. You know, in that moment, Jesus looks at this man and Jesus is full of love for him, a person who is eager to please God. As he looks at him, he sees into his spiritual life. What he sees that there is one thing that is stopping him from fully surrendering his life to God, and that is his attachment to money and possessions. Notice carefully what Jesus says to him. He says, go and sell everything you have and give it to the poor. Jesus didn't say go and sell it and give it to the temple or go and sell it and give it to me. No, Jesus had no other agenda but to see this man released from an unhealthy attachment he had to his possessions. 
And he spiritually discerned that he needed to let go of his possessions in a way where he would derive no personal benefit. He needed just to surrender to God, fully trust him and follow. You know, Jesus didn't discern this from the man's external appearance, but from seeing as God sees, seeing empowered by the Holy Spirit, Seeing this man's eternal, internal desires and motivations and attitudes and fears and struggles, all the things that God sees and knows about any of us, hidden in our internal, invisible, spiritual world. An extension to seeing spiritually is to start to think spiritually. As we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, to discern beyond what we see with our natural eyes, it shapes the way we think. We can, by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, start to have a mindset that is spiritual, rather than just to think from a natural perspective. Paul talks about this in Romans chapter 8. He says, Those who live according to the flesh the human way of living, have their minds set on what the flesh or the human nature desires. Those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. So not only can the Holy Spirit empower us to see spiritually in a moment what God sees, but the Holy Spirit can shape the way we think to think spiritually. And to think more spiritually is important because Paul goes on to say that the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Who doesn't want to live a life with true life and peace? Let me finish with one last thought. Paul says in another one of his letters in the Bible, his letter to Galatians, that if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Now, this is a challenge to all Christians because what Paul is saying is that if we claim to live with the Holy Spirit living within us, we also should live in such a way as to discern what the Holy Spirit is doing and saying today and we keep up with him. Now, that's not to say that we see everything that is happening spiritually. Paul talks about that in one of his other letters. But to walk with the Spirit is not to fall back and then have to hurry up and catch up again, but it's to stay in step with the Spirit. It's a journey of walking side by side with Him, a life empowered by the Holy Spirit. Looking forward to speaking to you again soon. Have a great day. I will raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I will raise a hallelujah loud and bend the unbelief. I will raise a hallelujah. Where the